Tom here from Lawrence Systems. And this mess I have in my hands is a 3D printed holder for some hard drives, a Zima board with a PCIe five port adapter on there, and it's running TrueNAS. Well, it's not running right now, it's in my hand. But when it wasn't in my hand, I had it running TrueNAS actually for about two months because I got curious about these Zima boards. I had seen a lot of my friends doing reviews of them. And I'm not a big fan of marketing hype, not from my friends, but from Zima themselves or, or Zima board computer themselves saying the world's first hack because, well, technically I hack a lot of computers, so I don't know that this is the world's first hackable, but hey, that's good branding. And as far as quality of device, that's what I wanted to talk about is does it live up to the hype? Is it worth buying? Or should you just go with some other system that you can find cheaply on Amazon because it's more powerful or some old computer maybe you have laying around? And that's where we're going to break down some of the differences here because this is obviously not going to be more powerful than i5 Dell that you have laying around. But what this does have an advantage of is first, it's x86 based. That's the first thing that really caught my attention of not just trying to be a Raspberry Pi clone because that's really not what it is. It is a single board computer, but it's also x86, not having to be limited to only things that support ARM. That means PFSense, OpenSense, TrueNAS, none of those are ARM based, and I'm specifically running TrueNAS scale on this. That worked great. Matter of fact, I was shocked at how well it worked. And was able to run not just the true NAS as a NAS, but applications as well. Now, is it gonna run them fast? No, but let's talk about the specs because that's what's gonna lead into why it doesn't run fast. But I will already tell you at only six watts, it's not going to kill your power bill. This is the one big thing that people learn when they start doing home labs is, hey, I have these old computers I can find, or especially you can get really good deals on off-lease decommissioned server hardware, but, with electricity bills in some areas being much higher, with cooling, because, well, the side effect of all the electricity is there's a generally pretty warm amount of air coming out of those servers, you now have to pay the power bill and then you also have to pay cooling bill to dissipate all of that heat. Hence the reason some of these are really popular and really convenient to tinker with. Also, if you happen to have your arm in a sling and vlog number 341 is where I talk about my little motorcycle accident, uh, it's easier to hold and manipulate and move something around that's this small. Let's jump to your website and talk about the price and the specs on this device. Now this is what it looks like when it's not mounted to a little 3D printed case. You've got two RJ45s, a mini display port, two USBs, a power connector. We've got two SATA right here, and then you have a little adapter so you can extract power to hook up their drives. And of course, over here, we have the PCIe. That's the really cool thing, because not only is it x86, but has PCIe that allows me to do things like plug a five port SATA adapter in there to allow me to have more hard drives connected to it. Now, I bought all this myself. This is in no way sponsored by them, and I bought it right from their site. And I think that's the first thing I noticed was their site's really convenient. We have the models listed and easy to figure out which model's which. The cores are only four cores in the N3450 model that I have, because I have the Zima board 832. We have a 1.1 gigahertz base frequency, 2.2 gigahertz burst, and two megs of L2 cache. They do have a two core model, but I think that one may be sold out now. Uh, we have four gigs or eight gigs of memory on those models and a two gig model for that one with the slower processor. And then the onboard storage is 16, 32, or 32. And of course, the important part is this little six watts right here. Six watts isn't bad. My only other kind of complaint is the fact that it has Realtek chipset, but I didn't find any problems with Realtek. My history has generally told me to avoid Realtek, but so far this has proved stable not only for running it on PFSense, but any of the other applications that me or many of my friends have tried on it, this has actually worked really well. Now over here in the store, this is the exact model that I purchased, the JMB585 chipset. It's a PCA 5.2 SATA 3 adapter. But if you go over to all their products, they actually have a lot of accessories and being able to just buy everything kind of a one-stop shop from their store definitely adds to the hype of the device of, hey, this is convenient. I don't have to wonder which PCI card will work with it. I just buy it from the store. They have different USB adapters. They have, well, even a PCIe four channel USB because maybe you want to control a bunch of USB things. And this would be a great way to do it. Just pop this card in there and that 3D print file, you'll find that linked in the description below because the 3D print file will hold this as well as a Zima board so everything stays nice and together. Now, while the Zima board can power a couple drives, when you have four more hard drives that you want to attach to it, and I put them in, like I said, this little 3D printed thing, the Zima board is not going to power all these drives, so I used a external power supply. And I had made some comments when I had done videos or 
posted pictures on different social media platforms talking about this, of calling it a low powered NAS and people are telling me it's impractical. It is probably impractical because of having to use an external power supply and no case. So yeah, it's not the fun, nice, clean NAS build that you're looking for, but it is a fun tinkering build. And I think that's where all the appeal, once we separate the marketing, calling it the world's first hackable and go, hey, this is actually a fun thing to tinker with. We got a PCIe slot, it runs as x86. So we have all these different software options we can test with on it. And for learning, I think it's a really solid board for that. I don't feel bad about paying 179 for something that I can pop a couple different cards in, load different operating systems on, do my testing, and then that's how you level up to something production. Now, the last thing I'll mention is it ships with Casa OS, and Casa OS I thought was kind of cool. I'll leave a link to a video done by my friends over at Hardware Haven diving deeper into it. I think it's got a beautiful UI, but maybe a little bit lacking in some of the features, but it's really cool that they ship it with it, and it's a good way to get started on there because you can run more than just like Home Assistant on this or sync thing or some of those tools by dockerizing everything and loading linux directly on this you can actually run quite a few applications and it seems to be run them quite well combined with you could even run some of your storage on there and even if you didn't run this in true nas like i did with those applications it still performs decently with Docker, probably better than it would with TrueNAS because there's a little bit less going on because TrueNAS scale runs it with Kubernetes. But even so, I was able to run applications for several months and even go through updates and share files and things like that in there. Are you going to be watching 4K movies on it? Probably not. But for tinkering and getting started and learning, I think it's an absolutely excellent board. Nonetheless, love hearing from you. Love hearing what choices you made or what you think of the Zima board. I definitely give it a thumbs up on reliability, build quality is really nice. Like this is really nice metal. I didn't find it to be flimsy at all. Our 3D printing, maybe a little bit flimsy, but overall things stay in there pretty well. Matter of fact, we will uh, do the dingle test where things don't even fall out of it for moving it around with my one hand. But nonetheless, I love hearing what single board computers you're looking at. I know Raspberry Pis are always a favorite and that favorite kind of created a problem where the demand far exceeded the supply. So I do like that alternatives are available in the market. I like that this alternative runs x86. And uh, like I said, it's a fun tinker board. I definitely recommend it, but hey, let me know what you think and uh, love hearing from you. Like and subscribe if you wanna see some more content like this from the channel and I'll see you over in the forums.